Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to this uh, symposium. Uh, thank you for the organizers, for the, uh, at the, um, for the society, Max Planck Society and the uh, Universidad Nacional de Colombia for giving this space for share with you some of the results of our research group. Um, I work on marine natural products. Uh, when we talk about this is because we see the ocean usually as a source of food, as a source of transportation, and sometimes even for leisure. But in this case, as chemists, we are looking also for the molecules that can be isolated from the organisms that live there in the sea. When we talk about marine natural products, uh, we have to go back maybe to the middle of the 60s when this, uh, when this uh, uh, research area started. And uh, from since then up to now, the more, the, the more studied phyla have been the sponge and nidaria and algae. However, since maybe 20 years ago, the study of this, uh, that you can see here in this green and in this green uh, graphics, the study of microorganisms it has been a new trend because they are considered as the new source and maybe the main source of the compounds that have been isolated from the sea. Uh, looking for the places that have been sampled in the world, in the in the planet, we have even from the Antar Arctic and Antarctic poles, and mainly for the line coast. But there are some areas, for example, this here and this here in Peru and the Colombian Pacific uh, Sea that have been not so far studied. Uh, in Colombia, we are like five uh, groups of research that research in marine natural products. Uh, one from Santa Marta, from the Invemar, the one from the Universidad of Córdoba, Monteria, uh, from the Universidad de Antioquia, Medellín, two groups in Bogota, and from one group in Popayán. These groups uh, studied mainly the Caribbean the Caribbean Sea, samples from the Caribbean Sea, uh, mostly because we have a strong contact with uh, marine biologists from these uh, that are specialized in organisms that grow, organisms that grow in these uh, sampling places. However, only one study was uh, obtained, in, it was like 15 years ago, uh, from samples from the Pacific Ocean, but no so many studies have been conducted on these uh, of, on the organisms from this area. We have been studying sponges, we start st studying sponges, but uh, in the last uh, years we focus our studies on soft corals and algae, and we, look, we were been looking for uh, antifouling compounds, for example, this Sembran compound is incorporated in some uh, coatings in order to, uh, to have the, the surfaces with, uh, with our a reduced colonization of the organism like can be seen in this picture from a field test. Also, we look for antiviral compounds from algae. There is a group in Brazil that isolates this uh, diterpene from algae, very active compound, and we were able to find some analogs from soft corals also here with good activity, and some cytotoxic and anti-inflammatory compounds also from uh, soft corals. However, when we see at the organisms from the ocean, like a source of compounds, we have something that we call the marine natural problem, the supply problem. This is mostly because um, we have organisms with uh, difficulties for the access because most of them we have to access by scuba diving and sometimes at the deeper, uh, yeah, they, are, they are in at very, deep, uh, very deep areas. On the other hand, the organisms have uh, like a very low um, abundance and uh, besides of this low abundance we have very low concentration of the molecules on those organisms. The idea is try to resolve this uh, supply problem as soon as we go, can go back to the presentation we can see that for example there is the synthetic or the semi-synthetic approaches there is also the, like the marine culture approach that is try to uh, culture the organisms in, the, in their environments. And on the other hand, uh, we have, for example, the culture of the organisms in aquaria, and they, could, they try to do some biotechnological approaches 
in order to culture the microorganisms that are associated to those uh, marine invertebrates. And the next. <laughs> Next, please. Thank you. No. Mira la ocho. Mira la ocho. Pasa la ocho. Then here. Okay. Let's try now. Uh, talking about the, the approach from uh, the marine uh, microorganisms as this uh, source of the compounds. Opa. Here we go. Pues tengo mi computador. Let's one more time. Okay. Well, it seems to be work now. To work now. Okay. Uh, we were here, and I would like to talk about our culture in aquaria. The, our first attempts to culture in aquaria, or how we select the samples, and how we can try to do uh, this. Um, approach with the marine microorganisms as a source of the compounds. Let's start from here, from the marine um, microorganisms, but we are going to talk about an application of these uh, recovered marine strains as a source of uh, compounds or even their organism as a biocontrol agents. There are several concerns for the use of agrochemical. This is well known for all of us. They are highly toxic, they have problems with residuality, low specificity, and uh, appearance of uh, resistance. And the marine organisms, and also some uh, microorganisms isolated from soil, can be used as uh, biocontrol agents or because the, among the uh, mechanism of actions that uh, include this uh, answer for control of phytopathogens, there is the production of secondary metabolites, that this is our main interest. In this case, I have some picture here of a product, and I widely use it. This is the active compound from this product, and it's used as a bactericide and a fungicide in several uh, cultures. What we got uh, so far is a collection of marine uh, organisms that, uh, for example, in this picture, you can see the pathogen here growing uh, in the petri dish, and uh, when it's uh, surrounded by the, our strains, is completely controlled from this kind of strains that show some antibiotic and some uh, uh, growth inhibition. We were able to isolate some peptides, for example, this cyclic peptide that was active against some bacteria uh, that are uh, pathogens of rice. On the other hand, we were also looking for quorum quenchers, compounds that uh, uh, are quorum quenching inhibitors, and uh, we can see here in this picture uh, over uh, uh, onion catafils how this uh, compound, this peptide, is able to control. Uh, in in this picture, we cannot see the the green spot. That means the reduction of the toxoflavine uh, production. But 
going back to our main topic here, the supply problem, we can see here also how this, the culture of this organism in different culture media is allowed us to recover over 1.5 grams of this, uh, only of this compound, which is a very good result in order to understand, to resolve this uh, supply problem. And uh, we also uh, uh, use metabolomics as a tool for try to prioritize and to select the samples for these kind of studies. Uh, here we have, for example, from seven, uh, seven strains, the active, uh, the active strains uh, appears here in this OPLSDA. And uh, guided for this, uh, from this aside, from this uh, technique, from this NMR metabolomic profiling, we were able also to isolate another uh, linear peptide, very interesting in its structure, and uh, also several um, compounds with similar structure, like this peptide, were also detected by mass networking uh, uh, in an approach, that in an attempt to, uh, for identify the, their structures. These compounds were active against fungi, several fungi, and even insects. This same tool applied for some uh, fungi that is uh, used as a biocontrol agent, allows to detect more of this, the diversity that can be obtained from uh, traditional studies of uh, isolation and structural, and structural elucidation. We can see here in orange four of, com of the compounds isolated, but we also were able to detect and predict the structure of other 12 analogs of these kind of compounds. On the other hand, also there is a problem with the novelty of the new compounds that we are able to obtain from nature. The, we, it can be depicted here when, uh, from, this, from this graphic, where from the 1,500 compounds that are um, recently isolated per year, only 10% of these compounds can be uh, or, uh, belong to a new class of structural model, uh, new scaffolds of these compounds. Uh, one of the approaches in order to um, explore the chemical diversity of the microorganisms, this is in this case is applied for the microorganisms, is try to uh, to get access to the silent biosynthetic gene clusters from these microorganisms, and it can be done by molecular approaches or by cultural approaches in order to try to uh, detect and to express this kind of compounds. Uh, in a co-culture approach, uh, we can see here we have two actinobacteria. Uh, here we have the metabolic profile by NMR, of the Streptomyces strain, here the Rhodococcus strain, and here in the co-culture, in the interaction between these two strains, new signals appear, and we were able to detect the, uh, the, these compounds, this indolicon compound, from the produced by the Streptomyces strain that previously, and when it's culture only in a monoculture, produce mainly this tetrapeptide. So we are doing some uh, attempts in order to explore this chemical diversity and this tool for, for even get more compounds from the strains that we are studying nowadays. The second approach for this uh, problem of the marine supply is the aquaculture, but uh, it was our first uh, study and that we have to try to select a good model. We selected at the time we started Erythropodium caribarum this is an encrusting soft coral. Um, it is well known because it produces uh, brillant like diterpenoids and eleutherobins. Uh, these two compounds are anti inflammatory and have good, cytotoxic, uh, have good uh, cytotoxic activity. And it has a very interesting uh, fact for us uh, is, is that uh, we can culture in aquaria. Uh, going to the literature, uh, we have some studies, previous studies uh, from Jamaica, Belize, Bahamas, Tobago, Dominica, and more than uh, 27 compounds have been isolated from this kind of erythrolytes, and it shows also a very strong metabolic variation depending on the uh, area where we are um, taking the sample. Uh, doing this study for samples from Santa Marta, Santa Marta is here, and Isla de Rosario is here, and Providencia here, 
the three samples uh, doing this metabolic profiling analysis by LCMS shows that we have even another three new chemotypes. So the chemical study of these uh, samples are to see, uh, for example, from Santa Marta, a, a highly diverse chemotype. With the, uh, we got 10 compounds, two of these new compounds, but from Providence and Isla del Rosario, only two compounds were, could be isolated. With this uh, data, we can like, define here like, two chemotypes for the soft coral in the Caribbean Sea. One rich chemotype, a uh, highly diverse chemotype, for example, the one from Jamaica, Tobago, Dominica, Santa Marta, and those with, uh, few, that produce few amounts of, this, of the compounds, like the one from Belize, Bahamas, and Providence and Isla del Rosario. However, when we ran some cytotoxic assays, we found that only the compounds produced by Isla del Rosario were active against uh, some cancer cell lines, which means that in this case, this will be the sample that will go further for the um, um, aquaculture studies. But as we detect this uh, cytotoxic uh, activity for the titer pins, we try to go uh, deeper in the understanding of this cytotoxicity observed for the titer pins. And we took uh, over 32 uh, titer pins from several uh, soft corals. And we ran a screening against uh, three cell cancer cell lines of from lung, breast, and prostate cell lines of cancer. And we obtained only three compounds, like the most active ones. And we ran some studies for the, in order to understand if the uh, cytotoxicity was obtained by necrosis or by apoptosis, running this flow cytometry analysis using like uh, uh, annexin 5 and 7 AAD, like staining agents we were able to trace like the uh, activity that obs we observed for the diterpenes, for example, for this diterpene here, was mainly for induction of apoptosis. The apoptosis, in the case of uh, induction of apopt apoptosis, when we talk about the compounds that, uh, that have this uh, pathway of uh, cytotoxicity, we uh, found that several diterpenes were uh, stabilizers of microtubule of microtubules in the, in the mitotic replication. Then we try to understand uh, how it will work, and we went back to NMR. We use NMR by stru for structural elucidation, for metabolomics, and now try to understand how our compounds are able to interact with uh, the proteins, with the tubulin in this case. We run some STD experiments, and with these STD experiments here, we have the proton NMR for a compound, for any of, the, of these compounds, and as soon as we can see, for example, here, this widening of, the, of, the, of these lines in the spectra, it, it means that we have some interactions from the, with the compound, with the protein, and we were able also to detect some dissociation constants, and in the case we are getting this uh, reduction in the dissociation constant, we are also able to observe the interaction of the compound with the with the protein. Also, we can see how these are the parts of the molecule that are interacting with the protein. And we're, we need to run some other experiments, like these uh, T1 relaxation experiments by NMR that help us to uh, quantify the uh, kind of interactions that we observe for these compounds uh, with the tubulin for the three selected compounds, for the three active compounds. And here, we run another experiment uh, for the T2 uh, transversal relaxation, in, uh, and we confirm the observed interactions with the tubulin. And uh, the last part of this, uh, of this uh, research was trying to make a model that allows us to understand the interaction of the, of the compound with the tubulin uh, between the several active, uh, active binding sites of the tubulin we choose to run some simulations by molecular docking with the taxan, uh, taxan uh, binding site and the colchicine binding site. And we can see from the ener binding energies value that our compounds will act, interact with uh, both of these uh, uh, sites 
binding sites. But when we see for the this Tanimoto coefficients with these similarity coefficients, it seems to be more uh, probable the interaction with the taxon uh, binding sites of uh, of the protein. When we run also molecular dynamics in order to under, to to follow to go deeper in that area, uh, we s we found that our diterpenes interact with a very high stability in this binding site, and in a similar way as the taxol can do this uh, the interaction and the interactions that we detect were with the same uh, key residues uh, that uh, the taxol actually is uh, acting on. Well, this is uh, the end of my presentation. This is the last slide. Uh, we are conducting this uh, marine biodiscovery and some works on the interactions of, the, of our compounds with the proteins, the biodiscovery guided by this metabolomic, several metabolomic and the replication approaches. We are building strengths also for the structural elucidation of the active compounds and looking for the new source of these compounds, using as a tool also for understand the mechanism of action of our compounds against the target proteins, some uh, new uh, tools that are uh, that we are getting into the for the use of this uh, kind of tools, simulation and NMR analysis. I would like to thank for the students that are the people who. Um, do the most of the work and the strong collaboration with uh, Professor Lucide de Tinoco from Rio de Janeiro, professors from the Institute of Biotechnology, uh, Dr. Sulma Suarez, the marine biologist that works with the field work uh, with, with us, and the professor uh, Leonardo Castellanos, Fabian Lopez, and Adrian Sandoval from chemistry for the cytotoxicity, the molecular simulations, and the chemistry that, that we do in our laboratory. Thank you very much.